So I just saw Halloween Kills um, a few days ago, so I've had a little bit of time to process it now. Um, Halloween Kills is a sequel to the 2018 uh, reboot slash sequel, which ignored all the previous Halloween films apart from the original. Um, this takes place on the same night. Um, you know, Laurie Strode has been taken to hospital. Michael Myers escapes the uh, burning fire. And now the whole mob is pretty much coming after him. Now, I am a fan of the Halloween franchise. I love the original film. It is a classic um, of the genre. Uh, the sequels are a bit hit or miss. I enjoy Halloween 2. I enjoy Halloween 4 and H2O. Um, and I enjoy the 2018 film as well. In fact, despite having some major issues with that film in terms of its tone and its script, I still feel like from a technical level and from a acting level, it is probably the best Halloween sequel out there. So I was looking forward to Halloween Kills. Um, unfortunately, this was pretty rough. Um, I don't think it's a bad film. There are things that I generally really like about this film. Uh, for example, I really enjoyed the opening, the first 15... Sorry about that cut. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed the first 15 minutes. I thought it was really good. Um, it set up a lot of interesting things, a lot of interesting ideas. Um, so I was really into the film after the first 15 minutes. Um, it is a well-crafted film, you know, it's it's well shot. I love James Ducart and Michael Myers. Uh, there's a lot of kills in this film. It is pure carnage and, uh, you know, seeing Michael Myers kill people in gory ways is a lot of fun. Um, Jim Lee Curtis, once again, is great in the film. And the film does explore a lot of interesting ideas in terms of mob mentality. And that's nothing really new for the Halloween franchise. It was touched upon in Halloween 4, but this film explores it a lot more. And I felt like it was uh, pretty well done, pretty interesting. Um, there's a really good scene um, in the hospital when the mob are chasing after someone who they think is Michael Myers. And... Uh, I mean, it is pretty silly that they would mistake this person for Michael Myers, but it's still a pretty powerful scene that does um, kind of explore a lot of the dangers of mob mentality, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, unfortunately, though, this film is just a bit rough. I mean, there is a lot of fan service, which I thought was um, well done. You know, there's a lot of flashback stuff to the original film, which was really good, you know, they managed to capture the atmosphere of the original film and um, it kind of helped develop a lot of the characters, you know, there's some stuff with um, uh, the sheriff, I can't remember his name, unfortunately, <laughs> but um, there's some flashback stuff that kind of explores the sheriff's character a little bit more and it adds a bit more depth to his character, which was really good and um, the film does do a good job of tying into the 2018 film and um, kind of tying up some loose ends and it actually makes the 2018 film a little bit better um, so all that stuff was good but the film did not find the correct balance between suspense and gore you know 20, the 2018 film I think did a good job of um, mixing suspense with gore but this film there's barely any tension any atmosphere it is just it is just gore and kills and it's not scary whatsoever there's a couple of decent little suspenseful sequences one where um Lindsay is um getting chased by michael myers in the forest and she's trying to hide from him that was a pretty good sequence but apart from that there was absolutely no suspense tension or atmosphere in this film which is a real shame and it just frustrates me that the filmmakers have such a big ego to say that they are forgetting about all the other sequels and this is the true sequel when it has a lot of the same issues as those sequels did. The film also doesn't find a very good balance between the characters, you know, there's a lot of characters in this one, a lot of returning characters from the original film, um, a lot of new characters and it is a bit messy, they didn't find the balance between screen time and the characters, Laura Strode is barely in this film, she's in this film for like 10 minutes and most of the film is focused on the mob, which is, you know, an interesting idea, like I said, but they did not find the balance between all these characters and the film just ended up feeling really messy. With this being um, pretty much a setup for the last film, it's also not satisfying whatsoever. Um, 
this film, you know, does not feel like its own film. It just feels like a bridge between two films and you get to the end of the film and it's just, there's nothing satisfying about it. This film does not work by itself. And even a sequel that's setting up for a future film, in my opinion, should work by itself. This film, you know, does not. <clears throat> uh, there's also a, point, a lot of pointless exposition uh, between the characters. You know, I think the original film is summed up probably at least five times. You know, I'm really getting sick and tired of hearing all the characters, you know, explaining the events of the first film like no one has ever seen the first film. It is really frustrating. Um, and yeah, that's really all I have to say about this film. It's a big disappointment. It was well shot. There was some interesting ideas, some um, good character stuff. Um, I like how it tied back to the first film and tied up a lot of loose ends. But overall, this is a film that is completely devoid of any sort of atmosphere and suspense and logic, really. Um, it is just really... It is just really rough, you know, I'm still excited to see Halloween Kills and I hope that, sorry, I'm still really excited to see Halloween Ends and I hope that that film makes this film a little bit more tolerable, but as it stands, I wasn't really a fan of this new Halloween film, unfortunately, so I'll probably give it maybe two and a half out of five stars, so uh, that's about it.